This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Today we are starting a new chapter, which is the P block elements. So first we'll see what are main group elements. And uh, after that, one by one, all the groups will be discussed. That is the groups that are present in P block because this chapter is all about P block elements. Here we can see main group elements, which is S block and also P block elements, which is at the right hand side. Okay, S block in the left hand side and uh, another main group, which is P block at the right hand side. And in between these two main group elements, there is transition metals present and that is mainly containing the D block elements. Fine. And in between barium and lanthanum, there are basically presence of all these elements that is starting from cerium up to lutetium. And all these elements together called lanthanides, or it is also called as 4A block elements. And in between RA and actinium AC, there are also present of all these elements starting from thorium TH up to laurentium LR. Okay, so this is also uh, a block elements, but it is 5F uh, block elements. So there are S block, P block, D block, and A block. Now, how we have different blocks? It is depending on the last electron, it is entering which orbit. So if the last electron is entering S block, it will be uh, under S block elements. If it is D block, it will be under D block elements, and also for P and A blocks. In this chapter, we will basically focus on P-block elements and uh, that will be started from group 15 up to group 18, okay? So when uh, that is under class 12, we have only group 12, uh, 15 to 18. So group 13 and 14, that two will not be discussed, okay? There are basically total six groups, but only 15, 16, 17, 18, these four groups will be discussed. Now, position of P block in the periodic table, if we see, see, this is the P block. And here, the group number 13 is, it is the first group of D block and the last group is group 18. Okay, so total, how many groups are there? Starting from 13 up to 18, it is total six groups. Okay, and if it is S block, there are only two groups. When it is D block, starting from three up to 12. And in A block, all are basically, uh, that is uh, present uh, at the same position. So that is why we do not talk about any group. But A block, D block, uh, that belongs to other chapters. In this chapter, it is all about P block elements. So here we have only the P block. See, this is group 13 and uh, then 14. 15, 16, 17, and 18. So total six groups. Now we will see some common properties of P block elements. So this property you will find for any element uh, that is under P block. Okay. In this element, as we are uh, saying that it is P block, so obviously the last electron will be entering the outermost P orbital. Fine. That is why it is P block elements. As the number of p orbital is three, that is, we know so, uh, whether it is three p, four p, five p, whatever it is, it is always having three orbitals. And in each orbital, maximum capacity of electron is two. Now, three orbital means three into two. There will be total six electron capacity. So, three orbitals. In each orbital, you can place maximum two electrons. So ultimately it can accommodate maximum six electrons, okay? So that is the reason there are total six groups, 13, uh, starting from 13 up to 18. Because the first group, it will be having general configuration NP1, okay? And then NP2, NP3, and in this way up to NP6. Now, once you reach NP6, further you cannot add any uh, electron. 
So that is the reason it is the ultimate. That is group 18. So that is the reason here we have only six groups. General electronic configuration, uh, that is if we consider NS2, basically NS2, uh, it is common whether it is group 13, 14, 15, uh, any group. So NS2, that is two electrons in NS, it will always be there. But P or vital electron, that will be changing. And that is the reason we have here different groups. So starting from NS2 NP1, which is for group 13, and the last group, general electronic configuration is NS2 NP6, and this is for group 18. Only in P-block elements, you can find metals, non-metals, and metalloids. okay? Now, if you consider other block, for example, if you consider S block, you will see that there, there is presence of metals only. There is no non-metal. But P block is very versatile because in this block, you can find metals, you can find non-metals, even you can find metalloids. Now, metalloids uh, are those elements which are having properties in between metals and non-metals. They are called metalloids. So all these three types of elements can exist unlike other block uh, that is in S block all are mainly metallic in D block also uh, mostly metallic but here you can find all the three types so that is why it is very uh, diverse in nature that is if you consider the chemistry of P block elements this is very diverse the first member of each group they differ from the heavier members of that particular group in its ability to form p by p by multiple bonds. Now, what is the meaning of this line? So suppose we have group 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? Now the first member, that is uh, boron, carbon, nitrogen. The first member that is actually from second period. Now, when we are talking about second period, that means the p orbital that will be involved is 2p. Now, when it is pi bond, that means it is partial uh, sidewise over overlap of 2p orbital like this. Okay. Now this type of sidewise overlap, it will be uh, effective when it is 2p rather than 3p. Okay. Because as the size increases, there is increase in diffuseness. So as a result, the sidewise overlap will not be very effective. That means when it is pi bond occurring between 2p orbital, which is 2p, not 3p or 4p, that is size is very small, then pi bond will be very good. So that is the reason the first member of any group, whether it is 13, 14, 15, 16, it can form pi bond in a very effective way. So that is the reason it can form multiple bonds. And for this reason, the first member of each group, they differ from their other members. That is just consider group 15. The next element is phosphorus, then arsenic. But nitrogen, though it is having, uh, it is in the same group of phosphorus and arsenic, but still it will have some properties which are not similar to phosphorus and arsenic. Okay. So this is the meaning of this line. That is the first member of each group. It will differ from the other members of that particular group. The heavier elements do form pi bonds, but this involves d orbitals. Now, when we are moving to, that is down the group, when we are moving towards heavier elements having high molar mass, they, also, they can form pi bonds. But remember, now the pi bonds, it is generated from d orbitals, not from p orbitals. Because pi bond is possible between two d orbitals also, like this. This is also sidewise overlap, right? So this is d pi p pi bond. That is d pi d pi. It is not p pi p pi because for heavier elements, d orbital is present. But for uh, that is the members of each group that are present uh, in the second period, they will not have a d orbital. So d pi d pi bond that is also not possible. So all these points are clear. Is there any doubt? <coughs> Here we have D 
these six groups. First, we have the general electronic configuration. ns 2 p one c S electron that is fixed. Only the electron in P is increasing. Okay. And uh, the first member that is the member which is present in second period, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Group oxidation state. Now, group oxidation state, you can also call it common oxidation state. Okay. That is the oxidation state which is uh, present for all the elements. And group oxidation state, you can easily understand it is basically the second digit of each group. So here it is mentioned plus three, that means it is the second digit three, then four, five. Okay, so in this way you can remember it. Other oxidation states are also possible, which is uh, plus one for group 13. Now three, it is also very uh, easy to understand. It is not that you have to memorize it. There is logic behind it. Here we have total three valence electron, NH2, NP1. When you are removing the P uh, electron, or uh, that is in case of ionic bond, the electron will be completely removed. If it is covalent bond, this electron will be shared between two atoms. So when one electron is involved in bonding oxidation state, we will consider plus one. But if these elect two electrons are also involved in bonding, now oxidation state will be plus three. Okay, so two possibilities are there. Either it is plus one or plus three. Similarly, when you consider NH2, NP2, if two electrons are involved in bonding, then it will be plus two oxidation state. If all the electrons are involved in bonding, then it will be plus four oxidation state, which is the common oxidation state. Even you can have minus four. Now, why it is so? Because it can also gain electron. Okay, that is, uh, if it is forming anion, it can also gain electron. In that case, negative oxidation state will be there. For group 15, plus five, that is the uh, second digit of the group. That is the common oxidation, uh, group oxidation state. But plus three is also possible. How possible? If you uh, remove all these three electrons from NP, it is plus three. But if you add, three more electrons, then it is gaining electron. In that case, oxidation state will be minus three. And why it will gain three electron? Because when it is gaining three electron, it is becoming NP6, which is basically the noble gas configuration. And this is very stable, fully, fully filled configuration. So that is why minus three oxidation state is also possible. Then group 16, NS2 and B4, here, depending on how many electrons are involved in bonding, different oxidation state possible. If all the electrons are involved, then it is plus six. If only four electrons from P involved, it, is, it will be plus four. If only two electrons from NP4 involved, it is plus two. And if it is gaining two more electrons so that it can become NP6, in that case, it will be having oxidation state minus two, okay? And same logic also applicable for group 17 and group 18. See, in case of group 17, uh, different types of uh, four different types of oxidation state uh, beside this uh, group oxidation state that is possible. When it is gaining one more electron to reach NP6 configuration, it will be having minus one oxidation state. And depending on how many electrons are removed, that is, if it is only one it will be plus one or plus three or plus five. And uh, when we are having the last group, that is noble gas for, uh, elements, then this, uh, that is except plus eight, which is the group oxidation state, all these uh, three possibilities are there. So this will be uh, discussed in more detail when we will uh, move towards individual groups because uh, first we'll start from group 50, okay? And uh, for individual group, all these oxidation state will be discussed separately. So this is the, that is general table where you can find uh, all these four information, that is what is the general electronic configuration, what is the first member, then the group oxidation state and the other oxidation states that are possible, okay? <coughs>
so sometimes we also call them uh, that is based on the first member of each group boron family carbon family like this and here we have the p block elements they are symbol then electronic configuration and atomic number and also the atomic weight see the first is name this is name after that symbol that is b then electronic configuration left hand side atomic number right hand side atomic weight now when uh, we are ha having this uh, first member that is the low atomic number elements for example boron up to uh, you can consider up to chlorine suppose you will see mostly the atomic weight that is double of the atomic number so see 10 which is double of 5 then 16 double of 8 19 double of al almost double of 9 so uh, in this way you can remember the atomic weight if you know the atomic number but as we are moving towards higher atomic uh, number elements uh, it is not exactly double it is somewhat greater than that okay for example see here uh, 35 so expected is 70 but actually it is very high but for uh, the elements which are up to chlorine or argon it is simply that uh, if you multiply it with two you will get the atomic weight fine so in this table uh, you can find all this uh, information that is name symbol electronic configuration atomic number and also the atomic weight so our first focus will be on group 15 that is uh, nitrogen family then group 16 17 18 <coughs> So as we have said that uh, p block elements it contains metals metalloids and also non-metals which you can find uh, from the color you can understand non-metals is this navy blue that means nitrogen and phosphorus these two are non-metal and after that green color means metalloids that is actinic antimony these two will be having property both of metal as well as non-metal and after that as we are moving down basically metallic nature increasing so that is why bismuth is metallic in nature and the next element is basically radioactive so mostly all the discussion that we will do uh, for group 15 elements that will be uh, restricted up to bismuth because moscow uh, moscovium this is uh, radioactive so its chemistry is not uh, known uh, unlike uh, other elements but remember after bismuth there is uh, the presence of this radioactive element which is moscovia here we also have the electronegativity values from which you can understand as we are moving down electronegativity values are decreasing and it also means that metallic nature is increasing because uh, non metals are having higher electronegativity value right occurrence <clears throat> molecular nitrogen that means in the molecular form which is diatomic n n n2 it has triple bond between two nitrogen atom it comprises 78 percent by volume of atmosphere that is natural uh, naturally its presence in atmosphere that is in air is almost 80 percent see that is most of the uh, um, if we consider the composition of air it is mostly nitrogen but it is also present in the form of minerals that is kno3 <coughs> potassium nitrate indian saltpeter or sodium nitrate chili saltpeter it is found as the fundamental constituent of proteins nucleic acid amino acid and catalyst that means if we consider the biomolecules then also uh, it is important the next element is phosphorus which is the fundamental constituent of animal and plant matter phosphate group phosphate group is po4 3 minus phosphate group are constituent of nucleic acid dna and rna around 60 percent of bones and teeth are made out of phosphate that is po4 3 minus 
then phosphoprotein that is uh, phosphorus containing proteins these are available in egg yolk milk bone marrow phosphorus also occurs in minerals just like nitrogen and there is a specific family for phosphorus minerals which is apatite family for example ca9 calcium 9 po4 hole 6 dot cx2 or x may be fluorine chlorine or hydroxy r the next three elements that is arsenic antimony bismuth they are found mainly as sulfide minerals some examples are also given and the next element which is radioactive moscovium mc it is red, not just radioactive but it is also synthetic it is not natural okay so these are the occurrence of these elements now see the percentage uh, that is uh, not percentage sorry uh, in pico uh, parts per million unit the abundance in earth crust for all these elements 300 then 1200 so this is the maximum that is phosphorus it's present in earth crust in ppm unit it is maximum which is clear from this value and the next uh, maximum is 300 and then arsenic antimony and bismuth is very low 0 0.2 ppm fine <coughs> Electronic configuration. General electronic configuration is NS2, NP3. Okay, so total valence electron 5, 2S electron, 3P electron. Now, depending on uh, which period uh, the element belongs to, depending on that, N value will be different. So, when it is nitrogen, N is 2, that means it is second period, then it is third period, fourth period fifth period which is clear from this n value six and seven now just focus on this part this is ns 20 3 so outermost electronic configuration this is always ns2 np3 but if you consider the full electronic configuration for nitrogen after helium that is uh, the configuration of helium which is 1s2 after that it is 2s2 2p3 similarly for phosphorus after neon configuration that is 1s2 2s2 2p6 then 3s2 okay and for arsenic now we have also presence of d electrons in case of antimony also presence of d electrons but it is 4d because the principal quantum number here is 5 so the previous that is the penultimate shell that will be n minus 1 n minus 1 means 5 minus 1, so it is 4. And then in case of bismuth, we also have F electrons, 14 F electrons. So in case of nitrogen and phosphorus, there is no uh, presence of D electrons. But remember, for nitrogen, even you do not have any D orbital because in second period, there is no D orbital. 2D doesn't exist, right? In P, that is phosphorus, you do not have 3D electron, but that doesn't mean you do not have 3D orbital. You have here 3D vacant orbital is present. Okay. And in case of arsenic, here already D electrons are present. Also for antimony. So these two are having 10D electrons. And in case of bismuth, there is 10D electrons and also 14F electrons. Okay. Now, why I am for, uh, that is uh, highlighting on this part that is presence of D and F electrons because because of the presence of these D and F electrons, it has direct effect on its uh, not just atomic properties but also chemical properties. Okay, so that is the reason uh, you have to remember uh, that as we are moving down, gradually D electrons are also included and uh, f electrons are also included but the first member there is no d orbital and the third period element that is phosphorus here d electrons not present but vacant 3d available atomic radii atomic radii of group 15 elements if we compare with group 14 obviously it is less now the reason is as we move from left hand side to right hand side in the periodic table we know 
size gradually decreases and group 14 that comes before group 15 so obviously group 15 will be having lower size now if we consider only that is atomic radii how it is changing as we are moving down the group starting from nitrogen to phosphorus see in y axis we have all the values in picometer and x axis gradually we are having all these elements when we are moving from nitrogen to phosphorus this gap is very high it is uh, almost from 50 picometer 80 that means difference is almost 30 it is very high but the next difference that is the difference between phosphorus and arsenic this is very low 80 100 that means only 20 similarly when you consider the difference between as and sb it is almost uh, very low but why it is so <clears throat> here also it is very low now the reason is we know as we are moving down extra valence shell is added that means uh, when it is second period and you are moving to third period now extra valence shell is added so obviously size will increase that is expected and that is also occurred but the reason is the difference is not so appreciable and the reason uh, uh, what is the reason behind it the reason is first effect is because of extra uh, addition of valence shell but you also have to remember down the group there is increase uh, in the d electrons and also not increase uh, better i say there is uh, d electron included after that in case of bismuth f electron included now because of the poor shielding of d and f orbitals what happens the attraction power of nucleus for the outermost electron that is increasing and as a result size will decrease so the expected increase uh, is not there it is true that there is increase but the increase is not very appreciable there is small increase from arsenic to bismuth and this is because of the presence of completely filled d or f orbitals in heavy elements but in case of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus there is no d electron so that is why only uh, one effect is operating basically these two uh, factors are uh, contradict uh, opposing to each other that is for one reason when valence shell is added size should increase another fact is because of the presence of d and f electrons poor shielding uh, effect because of that reason size should decrease so because of this opposing uh, influence the overall effect is such that uh, the first increase is very difference is very high but after that there is increase but it is not very appreciable it is very small increase okay so is there any doubt uh, how the atomic radii it is changing down the group after uh, atomic radii ionization enthalpy so ionization enthalpy means uh, it is the energy required to remove the most loosely held electron from the gaseous atom so mostly as it is uh, that is you are removing electron the energy you ha always have to provide okay the ionization enthalpy uh, of group 15 elements it is very high compared to group 14 elements now just uh, remember group 14 elements configuration is ns2 np2 but when it is group 15 it is ns2 np3 now np3 is stable half field configuration but in case of np2 it is not stable half field configuration right that means removal of electron from np3 and removal of electron np2 this will not be uh, that is same energy requirement right because when it is stable